here at the Diocese of Leeds and at Leeds School of Ministry, we believe theological reflection is really important. This is because Jesus calls us to follow him and more importantly, to learn from him. Theological reflection is a really gentle way of doing this and it enables us all to come to one another in humility, listening to a variety of different perspectives. One of the first things we do when we want to learn something new and to seek truth is to go to the source, the Holy Bible. And yet in Romans 12, it says that we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we believe that this is a continual process throughout our discipleship. But it's really important that we don't do this in isolation. We want to hear from new Christians who are questioning, why, why have you interpreted it like this? Why do we think that? And we also want to hear from people who say, well, what now? What does this mean for us in today's world? We use the four stage process for theological reflection, beginning with the experience itself. How do we feel about it and what are the facts about the situation? Next, we move on to exploration. What issues are raised by it and have we or anybody else any insight into the situation? Thirdly, we reflect both alone and together. What are the principles of the matter and what are our core beliefs around it? Finally, we move on to our response. How are we going to act differently in light of all we have reflected upon and have we any plans to do things differently in the future? Finally, we want to think about whether or not that's going to make us act any differently in the future and whether or not we're going to respond with a new plan. Then, of course, we go back to re-experiencing it from a new perspective. Now, you may think that theological reflection is new, but actually one of the earliest examples of it is in the Bible in Acts 10 verses 1 to chapter 11, 18. Here, we have Peter's wonderful vision of the unclean foods being lowered down to him on a blanket. You'll see as we move through this um, account how we look at experience, exploration, reflection and response through the way that it is both narrated and what happens for Peter. First, we look at Peter's experience. Imagine how he must have been feeling when he sees this blanket lowered full of unclean foods, foods that he would have been brought up thinking of as never to be eaten, perhaps even disgusting. I wonder how do you think he would have felt? Then he explores what's going on here. Primarily, his first question is, have I gone mad? Is this an hallucination? Am I dreaming? Did God really say this to me? Third, he begins to reflect on it. What is the real message in this vision? Is it really about the food itself and eating unclean foods? And he recognises that he's never eaten anything impure or unclean. And the principle here is about purity laws. Meanwhile, in another city across in Joppa, we have Cornelius. And he has had a vision too, and he has been told to go to Peter, to the man of God. Now, ordinarily, these would have been considered Gentiles. They would have been considered unclean. And Peter asks, why have you come? So it's really interesting, isn't it, that Peter's had this vision. It's about not calling um, anything unclean that God has made clean. He therefore changes his response. He may have rejected those Gentiles initially, but owing to his vision, he then follows them, goes to Caesarea and meets with their household. And there he baptizes those Gentiles that have already been baptized by the Holy Spirit. In other words, what God has made clean, they cannot then describe as unclean. They cannot reject the Gentiles. They cannot reject the baptism of the Spirit um, over the Gentiles and therefore include them into this new um, community of faith. You can see why theological reflection is so important. Had Peter just simply rejected that vision and said, no, according to my Jewish purity laws, that food is unclean. You know, I'm not going to reflect on this whatsoever. I'm just going to discard it out of hand. Then you and I would not be sitting here today. But because Peter engaged in theological reflection, because he took all that he'd seen and thought and felt before God, 
he was able to open up the Christian faith to the Gentiles. Now, it's also really important to say that um, when Peter went away and told some of his um, Jewish friends, um, they were not all happy about this. There will be times when somebody will, through the spirit and through the scripture, be moving at a slightly different pace to somebody else. And that's okay. It is okay for us to be at different positions. We only have to look at slavery to remember that while some Christians were campaigning for the, an end to slavery, other Christians were um, shipping uh, slaves out to their sugar plantations. People are in different places at different times and the spirit moves as the spirit wills. But using theological reflection allows us all to reflect on those matters that are really difficult, to reflect on where we are in our beliefs and to reflect on all that Jesus is calling us into and all that he is wanting us to be. Now we recognise that not everybody will find theological reflection second nature. But for some, it will be a very different way of thinking about scripture and Jesus and theology. So what we've done is we've put together a short document that um, outlines how we ordinarily reflect just on everyday life, as well as this passage in Acts. And then what we've done is we put together some questions for each of those quadrants but if you simply follow the questions and answer them they will help you to move through the process of theological reflection it can be helpful if you're doing it for the first time or for the hundredth time and it's equally useful whether you use it alone in your quiet time or together in a fellowship group or perhaps a bible study if you've enjoyed this brief exploration into theological reflection and would love to know more uh, not just about reflection, but perhaps also the scriptures themselves and all that they're saying to us, uh, then do please have a look on the digital learning platform for one of our Introduction to Theology courses. You won't be disappointed and you are sure to learn more of Jesus, more about yourself and to grow deeper in faith and confidence.